Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out more Inside Number 9. Hope you guys had a fantastic day. Alright man, the bill was a crazy episode, and some people pointed out some stuff in the comment section about one of the reasons they hated the last episode was because how did they know that he was going to grab the knife from old boy and slit her throat? How did they know that was going to happen when they were fighting over the whole thing that he started like poking his fingers and stuff? And also, how boring the episode was, the fact that they were just fighting over a bill the entire time, and the excitement didn't really happen until like the last five or so minutes. I don't know. That's part of why I liked it. The fact they were arguing the entire time, it really threw me off because I didn't know where it was going. Like these guys just fighting about the bill. I'm like, where is this going? I was really focused on the whole hand thing with them like stabbing it because I was I was wincing the whole time. Like, I, I don't want to see somebody get their finger stabbed. I was so focused on that and trying not to like look at it, but also trying not to miss what was coming next that I didn't see that part coming. Her getting a throat slit, you know? That threw me off so much. That just that just completely threw me off, man. So, I don't know. I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm just sitting there like wincing while he's doing this and trying not to miss what's coming next while trying not to see somebody get their finger stabbed. That her, you know, throat slit was just like the last thing I expected. I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really unexpected ending. I enjoyed the the episode overall. It just was a very unexpected thing i don't know i overall i enjoyed it man i thought it was a, i thought it was a good episode i get it i get the points people are making that how do they know he's gonna grab the knife and slit her throat yeah why did he join the team at the end i think that yeah i can't remember if it was a comment or a message a big chunk of the episode was just him arguing and talking about goofy stuff and the the stuff didn't really happen to like the last what five minutes or whatever so yeah i guess i get those points but i enjoyed the episode man i thought it was good but yeah, man, let's just go ahead and jump into this one. We'll talk about it more at the end. What's going on? Who are you? Oh, for God's sake, you scared the living crap out of me then. Jesus! You all right? Oh, I just need to sit down for a second. Oh, shit! Oh. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to startle you. It's all right. Well, you haven't got a towel, have you? Um, yes. Thanks. It's wetter than a nun's cucumber out there tonight. Thanks. Can you, um, can you put the gun down, please? Oh, of course. That's a whole lot. It's well, not really. It was just a prop from a student production of The Seagull. Can I ask what you're doing in my rooms? I presume you didn't break in for a towel. Well, I, I didn't break in. Well, not technically. My boyfriend told me that all professors keep a key above their glory holes, so I sort of just let myself in. It was a stupid thing to do. I'm, I'm so sorry. And you are? Nina. Nina Nuna. Nina, Nina Nuna. Nuna. Well, not really, obviously, but I don't want to get in any trouble. You... <laughs> You're not going to call the police, are you? It's all right, Miss Nuna. My bark is worse than my bite. Just tell me why you're here. It's just Simon, my boyfriend, he studies at King's College, and he's properly clever. He's got a bike and scarf and all the Harry Potter shit. And he's sort of obsessed with doing the crossword. And I don't mean the quick ones you get with a picture of Vanessa Feltz in the middle in chat magazine. I mean the cryptic. I see. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought that if I could maybe see the answers to this week's crossword, then I could sit with Simon and be like, ooh, 18 down, do you think that's parachute? And he'd be like, yeah, wow, you're so clever. And it's only meant to be a joke, I'm really sorry. No, no, I quite understand. We all crave approbation on some level. Tell me, what does your boyfriend study, Miss Nuna? Uh, architecture. Architecture. Well, I teach. Yeah, no, I didn't think you were a student. Simon says you teach classics. Is that like Gone with the Wind and Pretty Woman and that? I teach Wild Creature without hospital building. What? Sorry, what? I teach Wild Creature without hospital building. Twelve letters. Oh, it's a clue. Yes. Not a very good one, I admit, since you put me on the spot. So, 
A cryptic clue always offers up two means of solution. The beginning or the end of the sentence gives you the definition of the word, much as you might get in a standard vanilla crossword. And the rest of the clue is the wordplay, if you like, which is a kind of riddle. Like on catchphrase? Uh, yes, in a manner of speaking. OK, but that's too many letters. Yes, very good. We're two letters over. So we look here. Without hospital. Now, in terms of letters, what could hospital be? H? Uh, yeah, but we need two letters, remember? If you were to have an accident, if I'd shot you here in the dark... Well, with an empty gun, good luck. But if I had, you'd head straight for which department? A and E? Excellent! So if we remove A and E from creature, i.e. creature without hospital, and mix it up with I teach, then we get an anagram of 12 letters, meaning building, which is... Sorry, what? Architecture! See? Not so hard, was it? Is that in this week's crossword, then? No, 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 no. I, I haven't passed it properly. I buried the anagram indicator in the fodder, but uh, it was simply an illustration. What, a Pictionary? You can draw it? No. No, I was... I was just showing off. Is that what all the cups are for? Sorry? In the cabinet. Ah, yes, the Cambridge Cruciverbalist Club, the CCC. Uh, much like the KKK, only slightly less benevolent. Oh, is this... is this your wife? Uh, Monica, yes. Does she do the crossword? She did. She died last year. Oh, sorry. Did you have kids? No, no. There is no more sombre enemy of good art than the pram in the hall. <laughs> well, you've certainly won a lot. It's not exactly the boat race, though, is it? <laughs> How do you mean? Well, you can't beat someone at a crossword, can you? I don't know. Competitive solving can be quite combative, believe me. Blood has been spilt. Metaphorically, of course. What's black and white and red all over? The Cambridge crossword competition. <laughs> <laughs> or a nun chewing a razor blade. Or a penguin with sunburn. <laughs> oh, I've got one, but it is, it's quite rude, though. I teach Catullus, dear. I'm hardly a prude. <laughs> What's long and hard and full of semen? A submarine. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And what's pink and hard in the mornings? The A cock? <laughs> Financial Times crossword. 18 across. Tory leader on board for English flower. So that's a five-letter word for Tory leader. Or? English flower? A poppy. No. Daisy. Don't guess, Nina dear. Deduct. And don't take anything for granted. Now, what could Tory leader be? Boris? No. Look at the word. T. That's right. The leader of Tory is T. So put T onto a four-letter word for board. A uh, plank. Yeah, four letters. A uh, wood, twood. A board has more than one meaning, remember? Uh, fed up. No. A cardboard, snowboard. What kind of board do you pay? For exam board. <laughs> no. Rent. You pay to board somewhere. Uh, so put Tory leader T onto rent, it gives you... Trent. But that, that's not a flower. Ah, who said it was a flower? You did. Uh, no, you said flower. What I actually wrote was... Flower. Something that flows. In this instance, an English river called the Trent. Oh, my God. That is... that's so clever. <laughs> I knew you were devious. <laughs> that's very satisfying, isn't it? It is. So, um, your boyfriend is reading Architecture at King's, is that correct? Yeah. Is he studying under Pew or Fairbrother? Uh, the first one. And how's he getting on with old Pew? He likes him. Gladys Pew. He likes her. You do realise that Pew and Fairbrother are characters from the comedy series Heidi High? I've, uh, I've not seen it. Well, lucky you. So, Simon, if that's his real name, isn't a student at all. He's a muggle. Just like you. Will you permit me? 
22 down. What is a Frankfurter's number one bun don't start? Well, if we don't start one or bun, then we get neun, which is a number if you happen to come from Frankfurt. And 23 down. The origins of a species popularised savage serpents. Origins telling us to take the first letters of A. Species popularised savage, giving us the serpents. So? So there it is. Hiding in plain sight. I swapped cups. Yo. Very prescient, as you say, but the individual's urge for self-preservation is a strong one. Oh, please! No unnecessary violence. It's me. Yes, she is. Your services will soon be required. That was Dr. Tyler, your personal tutor and confidant. He's on his way over now with the vaccine. But he told you? Yes. Sure, he wouldn't do that. Oh, I'm afraid he felt it was his duty. Damn, dude. Brilliant student, midway through a master's degree in marine biology, but driven by a dark desire for revenge. You needed his expertise to extract the poison from the poisson, and he came straight round to tell me. We go back a long way, Tyler and I. Here, let me help you. Well, go on then. Sorry. Give her the antidote. Oh, there is no antidote. What? For tetrodotoxin poisoning, she needs her stomach pumped, some aggressive airway management, and an intravenous drip as soon as possible, otherwise she'll be dead within half an hour. You said six hours? Only with hospital treatment. Shit. Right, well, yeah. let's do it then. No. There's something I want you to do first. Is that going in this week's varsity? What? The crossword. Yes. What, 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 what's going on? What are you doing? I want you to eat her. What? Not all of her, of course. Just a sliver. Just enough that you can say you devoured your victim. Jacob, what? what have you lost going your mind? On, dude. This is wild. When the Sphinx posed her riddle to the Thebans, she strangled and ate anyone who failed to answer correctly. That's right, isn't it? I haven't misremembered it. Yes. What was the riddle again? I won't do this, Jacob. What creature walks on four legs in the morning, two at noon and three in the evening? It's like something out of a Christmas cracker rather than a Greek tragedy, isn't it? And it was Oedipus who gave the correct answer, man. He crawls as a baby, then walks on two legs before needing a stick in his old age. A bit like you, Nigel. So, do you prefer leg or breast? Right, that's it. I'm calling the police. Oh, and tell them what, exactly? That you're the victim of a student prank. In 25 minutes, you'll have a dead girl in your rooms in the middle of the night. You found out who she was, she threatened you, so you killed her. No. No, I'll tell them the truth. Uh, I'll say it was an accident. Well, then how do you explain this? You compiled this crossword two days ago. It proves premeditation. The know-it-all received a mystery guest at number nine. And before long, there's an asphyxiation. Well, seven down. Catch a train before poisonous bite. Well, catch usually stands for fish. I know that much. A train before could be puffer. So, yeah. Puffer. Fish. You even concealed the murder weapon. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist. This was just a bit of fun. I was trying to teach the girl. Publishing this in the student paper for everyone to see its classic psychopathic behavior. Tomorrow morning, it'll be in every wow, cubby dude. hole in Cambridge. This is wild. And on the inside back page, here's your confession. And when a down and out finds the girl wrapped in her underslip, floating in the swamplands, well, the police won't have to look very far for the culprit, will they? That isn't what happened. Nobody could do. A little drive out to the fens, a quaint hour. Brilliant student with some of the marine life she loves so much. 
You see, you're not in charge of this situation. He's stuck there listening to all this crazy crap. You can't crap. fit it all neatly into a 15 square grid. This is messy and illogical and out of control. This is my revenge, Nigel. So sit down whilst I prepare your food. Oh my god, that's a big chunk. Oh my god. That dude is out of his freaking mind. Why don't you tell Nina the story? I bet you'd like to hear it. Keep her mind active as her body seizes up. Jacob and I were students here almost 30 years ago. We roomed together for a while. Then he met Monica, the physicist from Keeble. They were madly in love. They were madly in love. They married. They even had two children, twins. But Monica and I, we began an affair. I didn't mean for it to end up the way it did. I was about to begin my doctorate, which probably would have led to a teaching post, a room of my own, very much like this one. But instead, I divorced my wife, took my babies away to bring them up by myself in the Brecon Beacons. Here. I haven't seasoned it. I didn't want to take away from the natural flavor. Jacob. This is... This is preposterous. Eat it. Or else I let the girl die and you rot in prison. It tastes like chicken, apparently. But then doesn't everything. I would throw up. Oh, my God. <laughs> I always hated cryptic crosswords. Why can't people just say what they mean rather than trying to trick you all the time? So when my son started getting into them, I wasn't happy. He became obsessed with entering the stupid Cambridge crossword competition. Perhaps he thought he could re-earn his mother's love by beating her new husband, I don't know. Simon was your son? He entered the competition under oh, a pseudonym. Oh, wow. You knew him as Rex after Oedipus Rex, the play by Sophocles. But you cheated him out of his victory. But that means... Charlotte and I, we hatched our revenge plan, didn't we? We said we would bring down that cheating Professor Squires if it was the last thing we did. Dude, get the and he may fuck well be. out of here. At least for her. She's your daughter. Mm. It's crazy, isn't it, what the unhinged mind is capable of? But she came here tonight to kill me, to poison me. That was the plan. Dude, this is Why insane. Why did you tell me about it? Just so I'd do the crossword? Pretty much, yes. I needed leverage. You sacrificed your only daughter just to get at me. Well, that's the thing, you see. When Simon died, there was an autopsy. Quite a thorough investigation. It turns out they're not my kids. They're yours. Do shut up! I always suspected that I first started before you said it did. Oh, God! So there I was. Dude! I'd given up everything. My wife, my home, my job, my entire life. All for a lie. So I'm sure you understand, Nigel, why I had to seek my revenge. <laughs> Help me get into hospital, please! Oh, I think we're past that now. You just enjoy the time you have left together. Dude, this is so cold blooded. This is crazy. A little present for you there, Nigel. This is insane. You know what Anton said? Never show a gun in Act 1 if you're not going to fire it by Act 5. Otherwise, people feel cheated. Isn't your middle name Hector, by the way? Yes. How funny. Wow, that is crazy, dude. That is so crazy. Rest in peace, NHS. Dude, that is so crazy, man. 
God bless him. <laughs> that was an amazing episode, man. Oh, but dude, there's so much stuff going on in that. That was just amazing. Pretending to be somebody's girlfriend, not being a girlfriend the entire time, trying to get revenge for her brother. Come to find out she was poisoning him. He knew she was trying to poison him the entire time. Uh, swapping the glasses. She gets poisoned. She, he calls to him. Oh, my, this is crazy, dude. There was so much going on in that. This was amazing. This is freaking amazing. This dude felt up and kissed his own daughter and ate a piece of her butt cheek. I thought while she was paralyzed, he was going to end up having sex with her. I'm like, this is dis this disgusting pig. And she dies, and this dude leaves, man. That was, oh, my God. This is wild. This was insane. I was thinking like like he was as crazy with the like you know fracture psyche whatever it could do. And I was like this dude sacrificed his own daughter, sacrificed his daughter to get back at this guy. That was his daughter. It was his oh my. Dude, this is wild. This is a wild. This is a crazy episode. This is really good. This is really really good, man. Yeah, I think I would blow my brains out too. Cause how do you come back from that? When he was talking about like the under stuff, all that kind of stuff, I'm like, I like when I see where this dude is going. This dude's a pig. He's I already see where he's going. I was like, I think this girl's gonna be paralyzed and he's about to rape her. I think he's gonna do that, man. This is about to be terrible. And he didn't go that far, but he was, he was thinking about it. Think about how bad that oh my god, that would have been so much worse. I, I I'm pretty sure that's probably something they tossed around in the writer's room, man. And I was like, no, that's just too much, man. Let's not do that. Where he did, like before the guy got there, like he did have sex with her or something. You know, but yeah, but he said something along those lines, like, like, luckily you got here because I am a red blooded mammal or whatever. So they had to toss it around a little bit. The idea that maybe he like did like that he would have did something with her, you know, like, yeah, they probably had to do that. But they probably thought that'd be a bit too far. Let's put the kibosh on that part. This is a fantastic episode. This is amazing. This is really, really good. This is, I don't know what to say, just this is a really good episode. This is wild. Man, oh man. But still, think about that. How does you... But you still have to be so unhinged. You still have to... You're, you're just that crazy. I probably missed something. But when he found out that wasn't his daughter, it had to be pretty far for him to raise them that long, that that wasn't his actual biological son and daughter. He said, fuck him, that he got so obsessed, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. And how do you just turn that love off? You can't just turn that love off unless you're crazy. It doesn't matter. You still raised her and you were around her. How do you just turn that love off? I don't know. That dude's a loon. This is insane. This is a good episode, man. All right, folks. That is it, man. That is all for this one. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Later.